day. How's this? It is from 228. There were four on this day, and this is the first of them. It was a real day of flow. The Mayan day was six night. And that six is an energy of flow, now that I look at it. Okay, so here's another one of those middle of the night journals again, but I can't say I got up for it, just that I didn't go to bed. Oh well, it's nice to be so free with no clocks on the wall and no watches that I wear. There's a real freedom in that. I'm grateful my life lets me live like this. So, what wants to be said? It's a more upbeat energy than I've been feeling these last few days. And it's either that or perhaps the body is on the mend in some way. Who knows? Some of the various things that were put down in, into heart awaiting resolution are coming up, coming to some sort of completion or to the next stage. And maybe that's what this is about. I note the biggest changes in self upon arising in the morning. It's nice to not awaken to the jangle of an alarm clock so that one can come out of sleep somewhat more gently. Perhaps begin to note your first awareness upon arising and see if this isn't the way of it for you. Or maybe your body is good to you and you wake up before the alarm rings. We can do that too. What I've noticed of late is that I've gone a fair way into abandoning the sense of worthlessness that I once carried. I wasn't aware of it, or not much, until discovering the previous lifetime as Sita, consort of Ram. That one was hard to take. I just couldn't imagine it. Plus, it seemed everything within me just didn't want to face and accept it. Meanwhile, I was in watch and observe mode, taking it all in. As I've shared in previous journals, the feather didn't work, nor did the ruler, so I guess Source had to use the stick to get me to recognize and finally accept this. It wasn't until then that the worthlessness energy could be faced, and there was plenty of it. It wasn't obvious. I wasn't consciously even aware of it. Yet, hidden in the folds of my garment, my aura, there it was. Once I accepted the new belief about living that lifetime, up came roaring from the depths of me all the many objections, things telling me how this simply couldn't be so. Okay, I've shared earlier some of the challenges of facing that. We only think we know ourselves. There are probably thousands of different beliefs we could take on, and each one would bring surprises up from below. We truly don't know the self, so I found it best not to believe that we do. Parenthetically, see, there's a weed you can look for and pull from your own garden of belief, the belief that you do know yourself. Okay, what came next? It's been a number of weeks digesting this one. Initially, it was rather glum. I wasn't liking it. What I felt was the internal dissonance, the new belief and the old ones warring with that. I just sat and watched, being sure not to run from the discomfort into too much distraction. Like you, maybe, I am ever learning what it means to love the self. So, after about a month, it began to lighten up. Well, I get ahead of myself. I'll share some personal things that just might give you a laugh. Upon my acceptance of the new belief that I had been Sita, what came up next was a surprise. Now, if I lived in mind, it wouldn't have been so surprising. What arose was some resentment, some hurt feelings with Ram, also known as Papa G. I was upset with him. I'll link you over to a summary of Sita's life with Ram in the Ramayana. 
the epic poem of his life, also a Hindu scripture, so that you can see the very good cause Sita may have had to be upset. I had not read this yet, as I wanted my processing to be fresh and not influenced by that. Still, in Papa G's biography, there's a story. Well, I may just read it into a live journal sometime. It tells the story of his visit to an ancient site, the Valmiki Shrine, which is the place where Sita served out her years of exile from Ram and the palace and her life as queen. Pregnant when exiled, she bore and raised her twin boys here, I guess by herself, I don't know. I can hardly imagine. And it turns out the site is very, very remote, even today. So, on visiting that site with two of his sisters, Papa G came on a shrine made to Sita and the twins. While he and his one sister were visiting, the statue came alive. Sita herself took that opportunity to give him a piece of her mind, not in anger, but in tears and in pain. She just didn't understand. She wanted to know why from him. So, even though I didn't know the full story, I did know about her exile for so many years and that her boys were teens before it ended and they returned to palace life. Knowing that was enough to arouse in me what I thought at my first might have been sympathy pains. Communication is so very important to me, and it's one thing that Ram didn't practice, expecting his Sita to trust and love him enough to accept whatever he did, I guess. Anyway, I can't tell you how very strange it was and is to be feeling these things while learning about another life. You're your current self, yes, but you're also that other one. It's very strange feeling at times, maybe a bit like having MPD, multiple personality disorder, different perspectives. All of this while not trusting the mind, of course. Thus, I wouldn't turn to it to resolve anything. Oh no, it had to be real and fresh. So, there was that strangeness that arose once enough of the worthlessness energy gave way so that I could allow myself to feel and deal with it. Mind was useful at times just to remind me that divine beings, which we all are, not needing a lifetime as a goddess to establish this, didn't feel shame. It was most inappropriate, mind would remind, and that was helpful. So moving on. After a couple of more weeks, I noticed a new strength in my step. It took a few days to put it together, but as I would watch this, I began to see that it was what came when the worthlessness went. Very nice. Internal strength. Now, what I find is a much stronger character indeed. Actually, I'm very respectful of her, this new self that I am. And maybe a wee mite afraid, even. She is much stronger than I've ever been, perhaps. I don't know. I just know it is different. And I'm not putting it on. It comes from somewhere down deep. What I see is that Sita is much more integrated now. She has gone through her own sets of tears over that life with Ram. For a few weeks, that, that came between me and my closeness with Papa G. That may have been rather funny, but it was real. For the first time in I don't know when, when I rose I didn't do morning readings from his biography. I just didn't feel like it, so I didn't, and that was strange. So, in addition to working through my own stuff, and we all know we have plenty of that, 
I've been working through CETAs as well. Now, I guess I could have expected that, but when you live from heart, you just don't have expectations. You take everything fresh. Your, you mind types will just have to trust me on this. The integration is coming along nicely. I guess that's what I'm saying. This week would be the first time I could begin to say that. I am feeling quite fine doing my readings again, and I have worked things out with Papa G. Of course, I just did a journal after this, and so you all know about that. But anyway, here's how that went. And remember, this is as of the 28th. He is such a lover of source. With him, it is very intense exclusive. Well, it's that way with me as well. So I told him that as long as he loved Source that way, that would count as loving me. That's all I would look for now in a mate anyway, one as madly in love with Source as I am. In loving that one, he would be the stand-in for God with me as I would be for him. It's the divine romance acted out and shared between two who are in the flesh. It's rare, but I know this can be done. It may be challenging, for the human being will always peek through and tilt the game. But underneath it, the divine love will carry the day. Anyway, it felt really, well, I don't have words for how nice it felt seeing that strength arise in me, knowing I didn't need him to love and worship me as a separate being. Wow, that was amazing, and it felt really great. The only thing real, ultimately, anyway, is Source. So this is really sticking both to basics and to only that which is real. Works for me. I wouldn't have even thought up such a thing. So it was a delight and a surprise to find it out fresh. Do you see? And I guess maybe that's what I have to share here. How the integration is coming along. This is actually the first amgodiment I've discovered that I have a name and identity for the first other one, besides the one I'm living. I've had numerous other experiences, but they were just snippets of those lives, and they came without names or historical details. Plus, I never tried to research or pin them down. Hey, oh wait, there was one memory I had that was so very special. I want to share it with you, and I have an ulterior motive. This came to me back in 1976 when I was fresh into the Air Force. It came as a lucid night experience. I couldn't really call it a dream, though. It was me living another lifetime, another amgodiment. At least that's what I've believed up until now. I'm, I'm going to say now I'm open on this. This occurred in what is now the British Isles. Way back before gunpowder and all of that, I was a servant in, I wrote down palace, it was a castle. I tended the horses for a pair that was either royalty or related to that, a man and his wife. There were multiple walls on the castle, and I lived and worked between two of them, closest to the horses, yet close enough to this pair. There was a time, this was a time when the horses wore crenellated covers, like the reverse image of the crenellated skyline of the castle walls, with the openings for firing on enemies, I suppose. I don't know for sure. I'm not into history, just guessing. Anyway, it was a time of swords, staves, and jousting upon horseback, way back when. I guess my family were generations of castle servants, I don't know, as I served with the horses since being a very young lad. Yes, I was a guy. I remember watching the lady and her lord, but we never spoke. What I noticed was that there was a very large face in the sky, a masculine one, 
that was divine. It was always watching over them. It was so very beautiful. It took me a number of years, but eventually I realized that the Lady and Lord could not see, were not aware of this divine being watching over them. And I thought that most strange. Anyway, they had married rather young, I suppose, and gone into it with much hope and high aims and morals and all that. Yet, over the years, that began to fade or wane. This really bothered me. Now, you may wonder how it was that a horse hand, I was the one who always brought the saddled horse to my lady, all ready to ride, would know such a thing. How would I discover that? It was by the face in the sky. It began to recede. I didn't understand for a time why it was happening, but the face began to be not so fully present, so almost right there. It began to grow more diaphanous, more transparent. Then it got smaller and smaller, it pulled away. As it was doing all of this, it began to recede in the distance. So fainter, smaller, farther it grew. Now this was over several years time. I spent many restless times and sleepless nights concerned over why and how anyone could let such a thing happen or why it would be happening. It truly bothered me. Also, I had really and truly looked up innocently to my lord and lady. For me, they could do no wrong. I guess I must have overheard some gossip or something like that. You know how servants are all but invisible to the gentry. That clued me in on some of the intrigue that was going around in the castle among the nobility. Eventually, putting two and two together, I realized that the Divine One must be backing away due to what I would have called increasing impurity in the noble couple. I have no idea what they were involved in, but felt it had to do with some sort of dishonesty. I really felt bad for them. But all of this, this went down without a word ever being said between us. That just wasn't done. Then, one terrible day, there was real upset and excitement in the castle. I was told to ready her horse and very quickly, so I raced to it and brought her the horse. She jumped up and set off before she was well seated. This was on some stone floors between the two castle walls. And there was a sharp turn she had to make, but she didn't. As you can see, it tore me up to watch what happened there. She had gone to my left and missed the turn to go right. She was simply going too fast for the horse, not fully in control of it, and the horse slipped. As she went down, it went down on one knee and skidded that way, tearing off the flesh of the knee and damaging the leg. The horse would have to be destroyed, and I just can't tell you how I felt about that. I loved those horses. They were my whole life. I was truly torn up. Anyway, my sense was that there was some very serious court intrigue, and my lord and lady were in very real danger and had to run from there. Another horse had to be brought right away, and then they were gone. In the next scene, I am standing outside. They have just left, I think. I'm not sure. Anyway, that face in the sky had not been there for some time. Now it came back, but this time straight to me. The stable boy. 
I could still see it, though others didn't seem able to. It came down big and bold and very close, looking right at me. Again, just the head. It said to me three times, very clearly and very intently, Lothian, Lothian, Lothian. I knew this was directed at me, and immediately I woke the body up so I could go look this up. I felt it must be a character somewhere in the Shakespearean plays. It had the sound of that, so I called the local library. The librarian reported that there was no such character. I was really disappointed. I don't know what I would have made of it if it were a name there, but I was disappointed. To this day, 36 years later, I still don't know what that means. I did learn that Scotland was divided up in three parts called Upper, Lower, and Midlothian. What to make of that, I'm not sure. At some point, I considered that maybe my lord and lady were attached to or a part of King Arthur's court, and maybe Camelot had been in Scotland. Hey, it was the best I could guess at with nothing more to go on. We didn't have the internet back then, or if we did, I knew nothing of it. So, if anyone can help me with this, that would be most special. I'd love to answer the stable boy's mystery for him. Well, for me, since that was another embodiment, I lived back then. He never knew what it meant. He slept with the horses, too, I think. Anyway, he was that close to them. He didn't really speak much to anyone. He didn't think to ask questions. It was truly a different time. I was truly a different me, or rather playing a really different part. Lothian. I knew just how to spell it, too. L-O-T-H-I-A-N. Lothian, the beautiful divine face in the sky, spoke it so very clearly so intently those three times to me. What a neat mystery. Hundreds and hundreds of years later, I have no idea what it means. Hey, I can't believe I haven't brought this one to Ken, so I'll do that as well. Still, he's an American, so not likely to have knowledge like Europeans may have. So, Maybe it was meant to wait all this time to get answered. 36 years, a goddess and a stable hand. How's that for some contrast? I'm sure we all have wildly divergent lifetimes to call on to come to terms with, my friends. Do be open to yours, whatever they are. Let's be helping one another through these very exciting times as we're spreading our divine wings to fly into full integration with our own rightful divinity. We are that. Remember, you too, each of you are divine. Claim it. Banish all sense of worthlessness, all feeling second class or sixth class or whatever lowly way we've been made to feel. Those feelings are all tied to particular weeds, beliefs, still growing as weeds in our beautiful garden of belief. Let's get to tending them so we can once again soar with the eagles, the angels. Now is our time, and we are truly blessed and supported in all that we take on. Good day.